What's up guys, Quezzy here bringing you guys another tutorial. Today I'm going to be doing part 2 of the 3D scene headers tutorial. Um, before we were in just Cinema 4D, we did a little bit of Photoshop with the texturing and stuff. Um, but we're going to go ahead and finish off and get this final product, or something close to it at least. Um, so if you open up Photoshop, go to Photoshop, you should have a render similar to this. Um, obviously this was the original I render original render I made, not the one that I did in the last part, uh, but it is all the same textures uh, because my textures in the old file did not save because I didn't save them. So I used the new ones and you get a look similar to this. You can see I screwed up the umbrella. If I could get the move tool. Um, I screwed up the umbrella up here and this shouldn't be sticking out. Uh, but it's whatever. It's close enough and that actually be cut off anyway. But you want to open it up in your Twitter template or your YouTube template or whatever you're doing. Get it set up. In the header template, it looks something like this. So this is like 3,000 pixels by 1,000 pixels or 1,500 pixels by 500 pixels. It depends uh, what quality you want to work at. And it, will, it depends on uh, how good your computer can uh, run Photoshop and stuff like that. Because a 3,000 by 1,000 pixel file is really big and it takes a little bit to load things. Um, but you can see the one thing missing from this picture is a sky and some of the backing and stuff. So we're going to start off by adding a sky and some trees. And again, in the description, I'll have a file and, uh, let me see if I can find it here, uh, called Photoshop part. And it'll have the things you need, uh, posted at a hundred likes, just like the last part. Um, but let's go ahead and get the sky and the sky actually won't be visible too much. Um, but we still need it there. So I'm going to drag it on. I'm actually going to right click flip horizontal because I want the sun over on this side and I'm going to drag it up and let's bring it behind the render and we want to have it so you can't see the water. The water is just below our last dune. So like right there and you get something sort of like this. So that's kind of like a complete scene, I guess you could say, uh, but not completely completely done. Uh, we still want to add some trees and a little more detail. Um, so let's go ahead and we're going to start with the bulk of the trees. So let's get this palm trees one file. We'll drag that on and I'm just going to bump up the size just a bit like right there. And again, I'll put it behind the render. Let's move it over. Um, so I'll move it over. So this big tree is kind of like at the end of the page like that. And we can maybe move it up there we go and you can see why i use this sky because these skies are pretty similar and this look this the two things just work and everything kind of blends together nicely so let's duplicate that the palm trees and bring them over and overlap them a little bit and we'll right click rasterize on this guy get the eraser tool and just kind of cut out some of that and we'll do the same to the original one and kind of try to blend these skies a little better. There we go. So I kind of put a bit, a bit of a gap there. I didn't really do that in the original. Um, actually, it's kind of a little funky. Kind of want this, this tree here. There we go. That's, that works pretty well. Um, so that's, that's all I did for that. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Um, you could actually maybe move this over even a little more. Maybe just cut out that bit. That's not too bad. That'll work. Um, so you can see this, this sky doesn't really do much, but it just fills it in. And if you wanted to, you could get rid of more of the, uh, palm trees and use more of the sky. It's up to you. Do whatever you'd like. Um, now click on the render layer and let's get ahead, go ahead and get the other palm tree. So this is just like a single tree with a transparent background. And we're gonna bump up the size and we're, we're gonna have it overlap some of these letters and kind of make it pretty big. We want it to be fairly big cause uh, it takes up a lot of space. It looks really neat. It kind of has a 3D effect like popping out at you. Once we get done with it, uh, it's gonna look like it's behind the text but the leaves kind of come out in front. It looks really nice. Uh, let me move it up a little bit and over like that, that that's pretty much where it was originally I think um, at least pretty similar and let's right click and rasterize this and we're gonna bring down the opacity 
right now, just temporarily, uh, because we're gonna cut off the bottom part of this trunk. So let's get the pen tool and just outline the top of whatever letter may be here, or letters, depending. We'll zoom out. And let's complete that. Right click, make selection, click OK, and delete. There we go. Let's bring up the opacity, and there's kind of the tree overlaying. Uh, but we want to kind of fill, like complete this detail, and to do that, we're going to have to add some shadows. So let's duplicate that and bring it down. Or just pick the bottom one, I guess, and call it palm tree shadow. And we're going to command U, bring down the lightness, and we're going to drag it down and to the left a little bit because our sun's going to be over here. I've already established that. So bring it down a little bit and let's go filter, blur, Gaussian blur, about 3.5, whatever, somewhere in that area. Click OK. And now we're going to set it to overlay and bring the opacity into like the teens or low 20s, maybe like somewhere there. So actually 31, that's a little higher than what I thought. Um, and then you can just erase where you don't need the shadow. So I don't want that trunk shadow. And I don't really want shadows anywhere that there it's not the letters. So go ahead and just erase all the shadows everywhere else. Or else it will just look funky if people pick it up. Um, so you don't want them to be able to see that except like here. And really the E is kind of where it makes it. That's like really where the effect works. So that's where we're going to do it. <clears throat> and if you want, you can go ahead and get that tree again. Um, drag it on here and add it in a few more places. So I'm going to actually right click, flip it horizontally and bring it over here, maybe flip it and kind of have it hanging over, out over eh, hanging out over the edge. Maybe make it a little smaller like that. There we go. So that looks pretty cool. Now uh, we're actually going to go to my favorite part. And this was sort of the reason why I did this banner originally is because I had this idea and I thought it'd be cool and I thought I executed it pretty well. And that is having the water sort of rush up towards the text. So we're going to get this water stock, drag it on here, size it so it'll fit. And then we're going to right click flip vertically, bring it down to like there, hit enter. And we're actually going to put it as the top layer and let's decrease the opacity. And we want the water to be close to the text and maybe overlap a portion of it. So in the original, I had it coming up towards the A, and then I added a little splash there. So we can go ahead and do that, and I'll actually, maybe that's a, gotta go a little less. So like right there. So it's just barely touching the A. Um, and then let's maybe decrease the opacity a little bit. Uh, right there works. And let's get the eraser tool, and actually let's right click rasterize. And let's just erase this top part. And one thing that I did play around with, but I didn't stick with, was just erasing this top part and leaving the rest of it as is, because you can see it creates sort of this like sandy fog effect. Uh, it's not really fog, but it's like a sandy effect on all the stuff here, uh, which looks really cool actually, in my opinion. Uh, but I ended up not keeping it. I don't know why, but I'm actually gonna try to keep it a little bit on this text, so like that, maybe a little bit on the surfboard. So if you look at the bottom of the text, there's just slightly golden sand color. Uh, Cause you know when you're in the sand, you kind of get the sand up on you and stuff. So that kind of works. I like that look. Um, now you can Google like water splashing stocks. I just did that before real quick and I didn't find any. I didn't really look hard enough or very long. Um, so I actually just have this file right here and I remember seeing these in a bunch of design packs way back, um, but obviously I don't have any of those old ones, so I just had to find this guy. And I'm gonna kind of set this up so it looks like it'll be splashing the A, so somewhere like there. Um, obviously we're gonna um, we're gonna obviously erase most of this and just leave a little bit, uh, but we can duplicate that and put it in some other spots. So we'll put it like in the corner here, maybe rotate it a little bit like that, uh, let's duplicate it again, maybe just a little tiny bit here, maybe like a waves crashing, 
and one final time we'll bring it over into this corner maybe not quite the corner maybe like right there excuse me and that will kind of give it a different look and then we can go back to the first one and kind of erase that was actually a little too big of a brush but like maybe something like that so it's like splashing up I think that looks really cool really neat um, I don't know if that's a very noticeable detail but for me it was one of the details that I really loved and why I really like this piece okay so now let's go ahead and do a little bit of the color correction and I'm notoriously bad at doing color corrections occasionally um, I'm either hit or miss um, I'd say about like 80% of the time I get a good color correction and 20% of the time I won't and those 20% you usually don't see um, this one is a very subtle color correction um, so I'm just gonna get the one from the original because I don't want to bother recreating it so I'm gonna put in this group here and I'll go through the settings with you so the top layer is a photo filter and it's just a warming filter it's the second one and it's on like 22% opacity and I think it looks really cool gives it that like summery feel you can see there's not you can't probably even tell the difference on the recording but it makes it a slightly oranger gold sort of look um, the second thing I have is a vibrance and I have it at plus 21 uh, vibrance minus 3 saturation again it's a very subtle effect but I think it looks pretty good you can see it just really affects the uh, purple on the page but uh, it's very necessary then the third one is the curves and again very subtle um, but if you look at it it actually has a quite a big impact on the piece really darkens it and uh, I really like that little bit of contrast and then the third uh, last one is a golden brown gradient it's like uh, what is it called vintage 19 and that's on overlay at 12% and that's the color correction I used it's very simple um, not much to it I probably could have uh, done a little more with that uh, but I didn't I kind of like to keep the integrity of the original render a lot I don't like to mess with it a lot so I kept it simple just stayed with this so let's go below the color correction create a new layer and we'll work on the lighting so let's get a brush let's make sure we have white here and let's just kind of create a little bit of light going around this side the right side and the top and that'll give us a bit of a light look um, but if I go to my insane pack real quick you can uh, also buy this in my store it's like seven bucks or something um, if I go to flares these are a bunch of flares I created um, here's this one that I use for sunshine flare quasi flare one and let's go ahead and drag it on and we're gonna flip it horizontal and we're going to increase the size and do something like this. There we go. And maybe just buff out a little bit of this left side. Maybe a little bit here. Maybe that's a little too much. And we got a little light going on. I think that looks pretty neat. Maybe it's a little too overwhelming. You could decrease the opacity. Uh, whatever. I kind of li like the little bit of the flare there. I don't know if you can see that but um, really like the lighting I don't think I did too much on the lighting I liked the lighting originally on this piece so I didn't tweak with it um, I didn't mess with the shadows as much as I probably should have either um, kept it simple but I'm not going for a super realistic look like I want it to be kind of cartoony you know kind of realistic it's just somewhere in between I kind of do whatever I feel like I want to really One thing that I sort of forgot to mention was completing the water effect. I did add a little bit of um, some specks and like brushes. So if you want, you can create a new layer and I'm going to be using brushes from my brush pack, which again, I'll link in the description if you want to buy it. Um, but I just use some simple particles. So I'm going to use this brush. I don't know what it's called, um, but we're going to go like a thousand pixels ish. We just kind of create a little bit of some speckles which is kind of represents the splashing water uh, even a little more and then if there's a, some in places you don't want like on this E that's a little too 
uh, too much of an anomaly for me. I'm just going to buff that out and maybe some of those. And there you go. There's just an added effect to the water, which will look really nice. Um, the last couple of things I did was I added a mouth to the crab, which you can just Google cartoon mouth or something. And I just put it in there. Like that wasn't too creative. I also added a starfish over here into the right, which was just a stock picture of a starfish. Wasn't too creative. And then I added some of the social media here down below. Also not very difficult. You guys can probably handle all that. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and do the final touches. So if I finish up, or I put this all in a group, we'll call this final real quick, and we duplicate that whole group and then merge it, we kind of have one layer to work with the whole thing. So let's duplicate it and we're gonna mess with some of the blur. So let's go filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and now 3.5 is gonna be a little, little too much. So we wanna uh, flirt with like the two range and we're gonna click okay. And let's get the eraser tool again and let's just, uh, first of all, we wanna erase the main text. We don't want that too blurry. Maybe a bit on the edges. Um, that will work and then again we want to keep this tree pretty clear because it's a big part of it and then I like the surfboard so let's erase a little bit of the surfboard maybe parts of this tree um, maybe keep a little bit of that blurry that will give it a cool look uh, maybe bits of these trees and then some of the water so you probably can't even tell where it's at. that's sort of where I erased and where I kept the blur. Um, maybe I should actually let's do like doom. There we go, and maybe a bit more of the beach ball. There we go. So you just kind of erase some of the blur, just keep blur in some other spots. I just fiddle around with it a little bit, and you might screw this up a few times. You might not like how it looks. Usually, it takes me like two or three tries to get it to somewhere where I like it. And you don't even have to de like delete this layer. Maybe you're like, I ah, maybe need a little more. You can go ahead, duplicate this layer again, and do filter Gaussian blur again, and try again. Maybe add some more. And now I merge both those layers together. So select them both, uh, Command E, and then let's duplicate them again. And I think I all I did was uh, fiddle with the blur on this one. So I just went filter, then sharpen, sharpen more. And then I finished off the piece, and that was about it. I didn't really uh, do too much Photoshop on this piece because, one, I did it for free at a friend's request, and two, I notoriously mess up a lot of the things I do in Photoshop that I modeled in Cinema 4D that I really liked in Cinema 4D, and I couldn't convert to Photoshop, so I don't do much. It's a problem I have, but I'm working on it, and hopefully going to fix that by summer. But I think this piece still turns out really nice. And I don't think a lot is compromised with the lack of Photoshop work done. We still do a lot of Photoshop that really pulls the piece together, but it probably could be a little more. That's the whole video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hopefully you enjoyed both parts. If you did, leave a like. Follow me on Twitter, at Quezzy. Subscribe for more videos if you guys are interested in more learning more about designs and different headers and things you can do. Add my Snapchat, which is Quezzy. I always post updates there. And yeah, guys, that's about it. If, you, if this video gets 100 likes, I'll put all that stuff in the description. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.